Yeah, it feels like using quarto and there's a lot of craze about using this quarto thing. Ah, <laughs> uh, this one is the one that we talked about two weeks ago. Mm. Two weeks ago regarding. Mm. We talked about, did you manage to explore because you said you wanted to look at how we run the PCA analysis, right? Mm, uh, more on the tidy class, right? But you said something about the one, what's the package name again? The yapstick, was it? Oh, mm. yeah. Which one again? Mm, the package, new package for PCA. Okay. Um. One of is tidy class, which is I think supposed to be like the addition to tidy yeah, models. Yeah. So I'm just playing around with it. But I only managed mm -hmm. to add it on like this part when we use the real recent CI data mm -hmm. set, which has decided to go blur today. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I was looking at the library for PCA as well. Mm -hmm. As for PCA, the only new thing I found was this one. I'm not sure if you can see to my low internet connection. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, it was uh, presented in one of the USR conference. Mm. So it's able to give like these kind of widgets that helps to well visualize yeah visualize like more than a few pcas but unfortunately i do not know how these buttons work but i i know like if you want to like see like pc1 they will move to pc1 and then i will freeze pc6 and then this is how pc1 and 6 looks like and then i can like see only certain dots if i want to so this one is like you're just putting it, plotting them on two dimensions. Because if you only drag two, right? Yeah, I mean, this is... Means only two. But what's yeah. the guide, the one that, where you see there's a drop-down options mm -hmm. under the this one that we show, like, there's a guide, right? There's a free guide. Yeah, what's I other options there? You know what they do. <laughs> I at least see the two teams and... Local PCA outliers. Mm, okay. I honestly I don't really know how it works because I just implemented like a few hours ago and <laughs> what does I just use, means? <laughs> I just use the default one and <laughs> mm, I guess free is just where you explore where you still not sure how many dimension you have. And then like once you have the in like once you know that you want to simplify it maybe to like two dimensions, then it will start to have it. Mm. But oh, I they have a guideline. Feel like it's still recently new, so I guess more things will add up. Like they did it on penguins. Mm. Uh, and, on yeah. the and further examples like but well, these are more like genomics ones, like people. Mm, seems like that because they're, yeah. they're trying to classify many genes. <laughs> yeah, and this is you sure. map, but it doesn't matter because you just put in the points, you see, so. Mm -hmm. But it's very beautiful, the color, <laughs> the way it runs and turns. Yeah, but unfortunately, I don't really know what these things do at this point of time. <laughs> damping. I don't know. Is that, is that like physics damping where there's a high attitude, low attitude thing? <laughs> Does it like... Okay, now, now it stops. And now it starts to move. And <laughs> yeah, I think it's the speed like they move, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like and no, now it's like when you scroll. It's like not smooth movement. <laughs> <laughs> the, the hit the hit is it like the square hit grid boxes? Uh, let's see if we let's see if we increase the heat. Oh I think it's to move a bit crazy. 
<laughs> okay, okay, maybe let's slow down. And... <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. I guess we have to leave it to explore all these, which... <laughs> oh. This you is thought... the one that they presented at the uh, conference this year, is it? You saw it missing? No, no. Uh, there are two R conference that I'm referring to. This is the Youth R conference. And I think Tidy class was presented on the R Studio conference. So there are two different conferences. Um, uh, uh, no, I, I was thinking of the use R one. Because uh, this is the recent one. I didn't yeah. know there's an R Studio conference. <laughs> uh, I guess uh, I guess this will be the last conference, I guess, uh, because uh, they're gonna change the name to something else, right? I mean. Mm-mm. That's what I saw on Twitter, but I'm not sure. Like recently, when I was on Twitter, the only thing I think, yeah, just now you mentioned the quattro, yeah. right? Have you yeah. like explored that? It's a very new thing, but we don't have quattro, to study. Uh, this is study in quattro. Mm. In quattro. So oh, my git file is quattro. Oh. This is in Quarto. How is that different than art? Yeah, no, <laughs> YMLs are different. I mean, our, it's no longer like equal, it's like colons. And then uh, the settings, instead of putting it like this, actually both also work, but we can also put it like this as well. Isn't that common? Because there's a hashtag. Unknown. Uh, it's also comment, but this is the same as this. Oh, also that's the symbol. Yeah. Like, so when you have like alternative text, right? Where the description mm-hmm. is very long, uh, you can just put it as the one line instead. Mm, yeah, then it looks easier to read as well. Yeah. Yeah, so this document is, I, I tried to use Quattro as well, but I guess the this lab also, they changed to using Quattro too, so. That's tiny models, yeah. Yeah, and then you can, but I think I also can create, the, the markdown can create tabs as well, but I think Quattro may be a bit easier when you create the tabs. Uh, let's see. Mm. Okay. There's no tabs. No tabs only at the yeah, there's one tab here, like these tabs. Wait, this yeah. one you say this is on quattro, right? But it's, yeah. it's about the same. I think just the way that we write things are different, right? Yeah. Mm. I so. But I guess the difference is the why the yellow, like this part will be different. Mm, it, it does look different. <laughs> uh, you have the option chunk or listed out, format, okay. Mm. Uh, uh, let's just start. I don't think they're coming in. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Not mm-hmm. I guess. We have not much to say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I just take from different resources and try them myself on Quato and see how it goes. And yeah, they, the book started with the the rest data, the US arrest data. But I just add some descriptions on what they are and read them. Like these are the states and like the number of murders, assaults, and how much is urbanized and the number of rape cases. Then I try to follow the emails log to create like the recipe to do to scale the data first and then to perform the PCA and to there's no tuning for this one, so we just fix it the floor. And then the, I wait, sorry. The four is the one that you just decided, is it? You have to decide yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. because there are only four of them. Oh, the four stands, that's for the variable. What was the... 
Oh, it's okay. the mom of components and they oh, are... Oh, this is component. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because usually we can, we can tell, like, if it's like the regression mm -hmm. model that uses the PCA in chapter 6, we, we put the tune there instead. Yeah, but you said no tuning, which... Why, yeah? Mm -hmm. I, I guess... I guess because there's only four of them, that's why. Uh... Mm, okay. So you yeah, could and... step normalize is just where you try to set it to normalize normal distribution and step PCA. Okay, then then. <laughs> okay. So I. Yeah, after I create the recipe, I prepped it and then mm -hmm. I prepped it and then I baked it, I think, uh, somewhere is, yeah, to, I bake it to get the principal component. So these are the scores. And once it's the score, we can really see uh, the data. I guess uh, this is just turning it to long format. Uh, see, this is to see the the loadings. I think yeah, the loadings. Mm -hmm. So from the yeah, from this estimate, which is after we prepped it, uh we can get the scores and we can get the loading. So to get the scores, we use the bake. And then to get the loadings, we just I use the parsnip tidy. And then this is how I extract the loadings and plot them. Yeah, it's quite strange. Like, I guess the first PC is just categorizing all the criminal cases because they're all related to some extent and then each of them somehow when as the PC gets like larger for the other components like the other variable starts to be more important mm -hmm. yeah this is just one way to plot it if you want to see like the positive and negative and then Usually, there's another way as well as we take the absolute value and then we see which one is which directions. So it's just, this is the same thing as the top, except I take absolute value. And then the colors is like which one is the left-hand side and which one is the right-hand side. Is there a tidy table where the can see the values for the components? Because the previous one was the scattered one, right? It's not. The, the table one is here. Oh, this is the values. Yeah, so this is the first PC. Um, the second PC, the third PC, and the fourth PC. Mm. Okay. Um, but we we don't have a table where we list out everything neatly, right? <laughs> okay, that's uh, fine. I guess uh, I could have transposed it is to make the PC here and the murder as out here instead. Mm, like the wider format. <laughs> mm, okay, but the visualization should be the same, I think. Yeah, um, it should be the same. So for PC four, PC one to two. Mm, okay. Then what's Uh, 
the this part is just to take like the variation, variation. component. So instead of the coefficient, they mm -hmm. take the variance instead. And unfortunately, the variance will give you like everything in like this long format and it can be quite hard to see. So this is the thing that I should have done for the loadings as well, but I did it for the variance. Is that you say the, the white format. So this mm -hmm. is the same thing as the top one, but we turn it to white form. The PC one has about the highest percentage of variance, right? 62. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, after that, PC two onwards, 24, 8, and 4. Yeah, so I tried, mm. yeah, I tried to follow this plotting from this one as well, but what I did is that I added the numbers, the Let's see. I added numbers. Nice. I also tried to create the by plot as well because the the book only mentioned like we create the by plot that was no pictures. Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, it says here that we can plot the biplot and there's no pictures. So I, I try to do it using another block from uh oops. Using another block from him, Tom Goose Hannes block. So what I did was I do some lateral transfer. And this is what I managed to come up with uh, here. It's more. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. Well, a sub rate and urban yeah. I guess there's some like correlation between these two. Well, well, not... and sub... mm. That should be correlation for the it's tree, like... right? Murder a sub and rate. Well, uh all right, but it's it may be independent, far. but at least they are further away from the urban part. <laughs> mm. Logical, but maybe this tree may or may not always be close to each other. They are more associated with certain cities. <laughs> maybe, yeah, uh, but the problem is uh, I cannot determine like Oh, because it's here, does it mean it has more murder, more assault? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think because I... the points are like far away. Yeah. But why the, what's the, what's the dot now? The one that connected the murder, assault, rape and urban port. What's yeah. the end point? Yeah, the point. Why is that's it there? That's the mean. That's the, that's the mean of the whole data set. Um... It's zero, zero. Mm. Yeah, because zero zero in the PC, I think is like the mean right, of all your variables. But this is isn't it? This is relationship between PC one and PC two only. Because PC one is about what sixty two percent. PC two is about twenty four percent. Yeah. Mm. That's why we ignore PC three and four. I guess okay. the different story may appear because in other PCs, right, mm. the variables become more important. So maybe the the other variables become more important, even though the percentage is small. So mm. yeah, I guess I maybe if you were to plot more of these by part of the different like PCs, maybe more information could be given or can be seen, even though the percentage is low. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how I was just trying to learn how to plot a by plot <laughs> using ggplot too. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah, the next part is the matrix completion. It is kind of the same as what I did for the presentation. Yeah, the only difference is that I tried to the to do because this is the the books way they use this SVD method. This singular variable value decomposition. Mm -hmm. Then I realized that the same values could the same thing could be done for tidy models and PCA as well. So I tried to implement the same thing using three different ways. Mm. Yeah, but uh, they should give the same results. Uh. Mm, I'm not familiar with tidy models, but can I see the codes for the tidy models one? Mm. So for tidy models one, you have to write a function. Okay. It's basically we just need to get the scores, the loadings, and then we take its inverse. Mm -hmm. And then we get back the estimated the data. data. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because the, the this one is also the same thing. It tries to get the score, the loadings. Then it's inverse and yeah, and it's just the maybe different ways of getting it after doing the PCA. So the iteration should be the same, right? Even though we are using different methods. Yeah, the, they, they all give the same value, so all these have no change. And this one also should have no change as well, because it's just the first iteration. And then the rest, uh, the, the difference that I make is the, because I don't want the algorithm to run too much because this document is already so long and then if it's run any more longer, maybe it'll take too long to load. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I just cut down the number of iterations by giving a larger threshold than what the book recommends because the, the book gives a smaller trash, very small threshold, I think. Mm, a very small threshold, but mm -hmm. I just pick a big one. And I use this one, which is this one here, instead of this one. So the answers may be slightly different from here as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the reason I do this is because I wanted to make it as close to this formula as much as possible. But I guess if we can change it to this one, if you do by these three methods, it's just changing here and they all three should give you the same values as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, so, yeah so this is the base you see, like after everything you should give this and the tidy models, like you should give similar values as well. And the uh, single value decomposition also the same values. Then this is just the comparison between their soft input and the algorithm in the book, which is to follow this one here. Mm -hmm. So the soft. yeah, it's kind of similar to what I showed in the presentation is that they are kind of close to the actual data, but so how uh the signs got flipped. It inflated a bit, right? Wait, just clarify the one on the right side, that's the one that using the soft input method library. Uh for this one, uh uh, yeah, also the, yes. the one on the left is using the algorithms, but the one on the right is using the soft input library. 
Yes, yes. And they don't look that different. There are still maybe like missing few points, but they yeah, still I guess look the, quite similar. The like the negative values are a bit so I guess it's because of the loadings that because the loadings may be mm. different from the signs. And compared to the actual data which I use, which is these values. They can say quite quite close. Uh. We say quite close. The only thing is the one that we had problems like when we talk about it was the negative, right? Yeah. Because the you sign. see, yeah, the direction changes. Like in at first it was like negative three, then the missing one is negative mm -hmm. four, but now it becomes positive. Positive four, four yes. So it seems that they changed the direction for you. When they impute the data. Well, that's for the 12.1. I guess that when I calculate the loadings, it swap the loadings can I was unlucky in the loadings. <laughs> like, but mm. somehow the soft imputed the the they got the negative sign right. The the sign is right. Mm, yeah. Well, I, I did what I could. <laughs> okay. And K means. Yeah, the, the K means exercise in the lab is like they kind of like simulate data, like everything is very nice and very well separated. Mm. Mm. Right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So easy to separate. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And... This is, I think this part is just using like the stats K mean and then we like start with two centers and 20 iterations, I guess. If this kind of result, the ratio, which is this ratio should be this, this one, I believe. So we in faster spread. But I guess uh, as the iteration gets more and more, this will always get smaller and smaller. Mm. Then we say we can use like after K using the K name, we use the tidy to clean this up to become like this. Oh, like, this. like it gives like like the centroid how many are there in each cluster and this we in sum of squares so for cluster one the readings is about um, SS readings is about 68.5 but for second cluster is 58 so it's slightly dropped um, what's the appropriate one? sum of squares mm -hmm. So I think like it's like no 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 don't die don't die internet. Mm -hmm. The cluster one actually the values are still I wouldn't they're quite new but I wouldn't say they are very new the within S. This one is still the, this is stimulated, this K means, right? So stimulated it does. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Then there is this glance as well. Uh, I guess the glance is like the total, the total mm -hmm. in some, it's just, it's just adding these two, I guess. Total we in sum of squares. Unfortunately, I don't really get what these two are at this point of time. The, isn't that the news you wrote there is total SS? So I thought that was like the within SS and the between SS. And when you divide, that should be equivalent to the total, right? Uh, I you thought... You wrote... Total within the total is the total, total within is cluster. Two, is these two 
add together is this one. Yeah. Yeah. Then and the between one is because I because I know it's like the ratio. Like, then I forgot what this means and what this means. Between isn't that just between the components? This is the like the component because you have v one v two. So yeah, the variances between the these two assets is the variances between these two v one v two. I then I assume the the within and the between SS should add up to the total SS, isn't it? Should be something similar. I yeah I guess yeah these two should add, add up, up yeah. Add up. yeah. Yeah, so I guess like from the results from here, when you use tidy, it gives this, you use glance, it gives this, and Altman, I guess it just tells you which point belong belongs to which cluster. Mm, but is that a, a data like the percentage of accuracy? Because this one is prediction. So they're trying to predict like the data point belongs to which cluster. But what's the accuracy of this prediction? Because we have the real data. Using this method, what's the accuracy? I don't really know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so we can, um, wait, no, we want we to faster. But you have down there the visualization part, is it? Yeah, but that is the one. one, which is not the actual one, right? Not the actual and the predicted. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, this is why I don't really know. But uh, guess... just now, I think you show the same thing, right? Where just now you ran a GG plot on the actual one. How the actual yeah. one looks like, actually. Yeah. This is the but, actual one. Yeah, the actual one. But but in then, clustering, we're not supposed to know whether they are correct or wrong, what right? But we have the actual data here. <laughs> because in, in reality, this one we're not supposed to know which cluster they belong to, right? Otherwise, because of supervised learning and because of classification problem, then we can use this confusion matrix already, right? Mm -hmm. I was just thinking like how accurate is using this method to predict. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess if you really want to how accurate, then because of supervising problem already. And I guess mm. you can use confusion matrix to test your cluster. Otherwise, the only way I can think of is to is to do like the tuning from tidy class is that you increase the number of clusters and then find the the so-called elbow part, I think, which is this like this one here, like they try different case, different clusters. So then I just use tidy glance and augmented. And this then, one looks small. This one does it because this is exploring this method. How long does it take to, you know, like, does it take long to run this one? Because you, you're like trying for, K one by one. <laughs> yeah, but for this one, it doesn't take long. But for the hierarchical cluster one, like the functions mm -hmm. that I use, yeah, that one takes quite long. But I guess it doesn't take long because the data set one is not so big. Mm -hmm. And maybe hierarchical clustering, you may need to create all these dendrograms and cut, cut, cut all the way. And maybe, maybe it's one that takes a lot of time. It's like the Edu class example that we saw like two weeks ago, like the hierarchical clustering takes a significantly longer time to form mm. the to group the three circles. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I guess this is that they take like each cluster and then they test the within sum of squares and plot them. But they just mm -hmm. keep all this first. Like they will probably some uh 
oh, the this one I think this one and oh. then for day, and then they try to find this thing and then but I guess because this one is a very nice example like the this one will be very obvious but I guess most of our mm. data set will probably going to be one straight line and then <laughs> you don't know where to cut. Yeah. yeah 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 I guess this graph well this one the class the the one with the cross I see oh, this is uh, a class yeah, this is like right? a centroids like just the uh the tidy glance and augment they give us different information, right? Like the tidy will give mm -hmm. us like the sum of squares, the glance will give us the centroids, and the augment will tell us which data belongs to which cluster. So this is where we like, and because it's 2D, we can plot them up to see what are these what are these different clusters look like. Mm -hmm. but of course uh, this is only one round like one run only of course people may say like hey only do it one time for each of the number of clusters it won't be so accurate I should do like five times then then mm -hmm. in that case uh, we're not able to plot this and probably this one will have a like the mean and the standard deviation which what I guess this is what, what, what the tidy class was trying to do as well. If where I, they just get, is it, so means we do a multiple iteration and get a mean of standard deviation of each. Yeah, I, I only have one example in the NCI 60 where I use the tidy class. The first part is the tuning. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, I'm sorry to skip so many parts. Like we tune the number of clusters, then we create some subsets, some cross validation data. Then the rest is the same as how we did for supervised learning, right? A mm -hmm. recipe, a workflow which has both the clustering and the, the recipe, a grid to say how many clusters we want. And then uh, we have to tune it. And because it's a cross-validated data, so they are, it, and we did it like five, so it will do the clustering five times on different data, subsets of the data. And then uh, it will still give you like the metrics, but this time it will be like the mean because it does, it, it, do, it do it five times on different subsets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I tried to plot it, but then I realized that I forgot to, to plot the standard errors. <laughs> I only plot the mean, but I forgot the standard errors. The elbow is not there. Yeah, because this data set <sighs> don't have to be very clear. It's a... Where to cut? <laughs> yeah, we don't have a clear place to cut, unfortunately. Mm, okay. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, so this part, the hierarchical mm -hmm. part is, uh, again, the, the book gives uh, like these kind of nice examples and maybe just plot like distance matrix. I just give a preview uh, because the data set is too big. Uh. <laughs> Or distance matrix and I guess it's like yeah. how you do mm -hmm. wait now uh, isn't this the same it's just a half triangle right they are the same values. yes yes they are, they are symmetric so this is the same as the K clustering the is there the difference what's the top the top values are the what is that it's the, the distance between the first point and the second point Look, this is the distance, the one that presented in this yes. paper. Okay. Yeah, it's a distance matrix, so they're all symmetrical and it's Euclidean distance. Mm -hmm. And then I they say that they have this H class that can do like complete average and 
single, which is the way to connect it. So I split them to like different tabs to see how it looks like. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is the, yeah, our markdown can do this, but I think Quarto can do this in a lot easier way. Yeah, I get I'm not sure if I can see the code, so I take some time to load again. If I can go down to matrix tidy. Yeah, okay. This panel tab set will give you the tabs. Then you can tap one, tap two, and tap three, and then you can end the tabs with these three semicolons. So our hierarchical clustering case, uh, let me go down a bit more. Yeah, so this is our tab set. So this is like the complete plot, the average plot, and the single plot, and then I end with the three semicolon. So it gives uh, these three tabs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's somehow the single one where I put two, it will give me this one as one cluster and the rest as the second cluster. So I just put four instead. <laughs> and then the complete. And then this is just tells you like which point belongs to which cluster, I guess. Then I try to find out like how how do we choose between these three and then I look up some notes like like this one here which takes some time to load again. Uh still loading. And this one says that they use the uh where is it? Uh, let's find the word. Yeah, they say that they use this coefficient to decide whether it's this one, this one, or this one. So I try to do the same for this data set as well to compare between the complete average and single. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The values look. Okay, maybe complete and average, they are about the same, but the single yeah. one is way off. Yeah, I guess these two are like comparable. Yeah, but, but when we try, when I try on this one, uh, they, they give equally bad scores. <laughs> yeah, like it makes sense because <laughs> as we can see, there wasn't an elbow press <laughs> it was just yeah. a straight almost a straight linear line going down yes. so it should be bad scores for all three methods yeah yeah then the, they also have this like this factor experience this like number of clusters as well to see like the elbow method I, i'm not so sure what the silhouette method the gap does uh, because it, it, it is outside from the book but i guess there are other ways to find the number of clusters and for the nice data set, it's clear like they can they know it's two, but when it comes to this one again, it's all over the place. <laughs> it feels like the second method is like a reverse, but I'm just wondering, right? After the pick, the second method, it seems that it's declining gradually. Yes. At, yeah, like there's a sharp decrease at one point. Like yeah, I Instead guess of like guess, the straight, yeah, why there's a between three, four, five. I guess for this one, I guess my guess, because I'm not so sure how it works, is that they take the peak with the highest point. Mm, yeah. Because in the in the real life example, it becomes like a straight line, just increase somewhere here, and then they start picking it randomly. <laughs> yeah, like how they Decide the cutting point that I way. guess it's the peak, I guess. Like where even is for the point? the see the third method what gap statistics. Mm. It's still the peak, is it? Yeah, mm. I guess my guess. I I I took it from this notes as this part, this notes. Yeah. Which is 
Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, they 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 pick what I think was like the the peak or something like that. Mm. The size. Yeah, but but this is something that is outside from the book, and unfortunately, I I I don't really know what this two does at this point of time. Like, because I wanted to find a way to plot the elbow method without using like the GG plot and because it was too much work. The elbow method is using what? The within sum of squares, so within SX, but the yeah. second method, silhouette method, is what? Average? A silhouette. What is silhouette? What is yeah, but this is like, What is K? <laughs> Yeah, look, look. unfortunately, I don't really know what these two does at this point of time. Mm. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this part is just say that we just use the correlation as the distance matrix. And this part just shows the same thing, but using the, the correlation matrix instead. And it doesn't really work. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, when it comes to the genomic data set, uh, yeah, for the PCA, we see like it does not really give very clear projection this time. Maybe maybe for some groups like PC1 and PC2, maybe some of them will be clear, but others maybe need more PCs or maybe that's may mm. not be the right the right mm. dimension reduction technique to use. But but the main purpose I want to show is like different ways we can see them. Like maybe you see the first one, second one. 3 and 4, 1 and 3. But then I realized, can we see more? And then I I found some notes that can plot like some scatter matrix version of this. And this one is just like the density plot of the... Just a density plot. It's nothing more than that. Like, But then I felt like there must be a better R package to see all these different PCs besides using Plotly. <laughs> and okay. this is where I found this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah this is this is cool but it's hard to visualize I think it keeps moving <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess I just it's more like I just don't know how to make it stop like maybe this makes it stop and this makes it stop to some extent like what if you have three like like three mm -hmm. on because now it's two, that's why it's very obvious it's two B. Okay. Three. Uh, if we have three, you should be three D, right? Yeah, it's three D and I guess oh no, I'll heat <laughs> let's reduce the heat to stop it from moving. Yeah, it's yeah. Too too <laughs> oh, that's the heat. It's the one that stopped the movement. <laughs> 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 okay, okay, that's nice to know. <laughs> okay, okay. At least, at least we know how uh, how to stop the top. <laughs> yeah, this is hard to imagine when it keeps moving. Yeah, I guess uh, we will need more time to understand how this package works and how these all these things. Maybe the documentation needs to be read further to see how it works. <laughs> Unfortunately, hmm. we should probably need more time. <laughs> that's, but the purpose is to for animated scatter plot. <laughs> but I don't want animated scatter plot. <laughs> yeah. Ah. This is where they extract the PCA loading, right? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I did the same thing and it's uh not so good. Uh. <laughs> not so good. Yeah, you need a lot of TCA, like around half of it, I guess. Make it. As for the clustering, uh, I yeah, that's where it starts to give like straight lines and things starts to give like random <laughs> clusters. And then when I, I mean, we see the hierarchical clustering, the only difference I make is that from emails notes, it was just one, two, three, it was just numbers, but what I did was that instead of numbers, I put the labels mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we can see what the one, two, three actually means. But even though it's hard to see, maybe because of the quartal space, uh, maybe I should have increased the space. But I, unfortunately, I also don't know how to do it <laughs> quartal. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess if there are really too many points, maybe this one also maybe not so helpful. <laughs> Yeah, especially for PCA, you should have plenty of points. Mm. Okay, but this seems this is a complete method right here for clusters. Mm, okay, right. good K goes to four. Yeah. Yeah. The average one looks average, like. like it, mm. it managed to get the leukemia mostly together, I guess. It's, and the single is like <laughs> just is everything it really works. And then the this is just we in but I find this a bit messy because it just tells you how to merge like if you have two different clustering methods, how to merge the data together, which this the base R does not so well, but however, the tidy class one has this very nice function. So everything here is the same, but it's just how we get the metrics and this kind of thing is slightly a bit different. But but tidy class has this function called uh let me see if I can find it. It's the uh reconcile clustering mm -hmm. so what it does is that for this case my example i put like the hierarchical clustering has uh i think i have three and the mm -hmm. kv clustering i have five and then how can we like reconcile them together is we use the reconcile on the so what happens is that we see the k mean it become the recoded to be three. So this will become hierarchical clustering number three. So basically, all our first the first cluster of the k mean is matched to the third cluster of the hierarchical cluster. Oh, sorry, I, I wrote wrongly here. Uh, yes, yes. So the first KV is to the third cluster. The second KV is to the first cluster. But actually, I put filter so it's easier to see. Uh, KM underscore two is. I'll go to the first hierarchical cluster. Mm -hmm. Okay, a mean tree on goes and merge with the second hierarchical cluster, and the extra was K mean four goes to the second one. K mean five goes to the third one. Mm. But this data set is really. This is the real data set, right? And C160. Yeah. That's why it's, it's, it's not ideal, ideal data set. 
but I guess most of our data set will follow something similar like this, like very chaotic as well. And mm -hmm. yeah, but this is just saying the count, like I guess uh for HC1, like there are 23 of them and because uh, clustering two is only so much. Mm -hmm. oh, I forgot about three. Yeah, and I should have sort them like this. Maybe. Yeah, there's some mm -hmm. overlaps to see. So I guess the record side helps to nice Yeah. But in terms of the tidy class, uh, there were, yeah, there were actually like new functions to learn and at least it still has like the tuning. I just try to understand how it works. But they also have this like cluster metric set to do the cleaning, but I guess it uh it did accept some of them as well. Like it's a just one one and just one of them I picked. There were others, but I just picked this just one of them, not so it'd be less complicated. Don't see so many metrics. Mm. And yeah, and then there's uh also like we can see we can also collect the metrics as well, like the we in SS and then we can see like how many are in cluster one, how many cluster two, how many cluster three, but the functions are just different. And this is just how to see the different metrics individually. And if you want to see them together, we can put them in a set like this. And then you can see them together. Then this this extract cluster assignment just say which cluster goes to which. I guess it's which sample goes to which cluster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then I just add the labels to see whether it's correct or not. And a <laughs> lot, lot, lots of good. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe the problem is because I didn't put any plots, so it's hard to read the results. Wait. But mm. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I think I, yeah, this is how much that I can know how to use it. But I guess I guess it can always be better if we add plots to it. Yeah, I can also accept extract the central, but there were too many variables, so I need to take the first ten columns. <laughs> Yeah, and we cannot see. It's hard to. You have to read the values one by one. Yeah. Oh. It's not so useful when you have too many dimensions, I guess, because you also cannot plot it as well. Mm, yeah. And then to get the the, the feed, right? It's used mm. for love because this one is actually a tidy from the tidy class object you see it's created when I when uh, everything was when I apply the fit function for tidy class and then to plot it back I just use the dollar fit to get back the h class object and then once I get the h class object I can do everything that h class can do which is plot all these plots and so on and so forth so all the things that H class can work. Yeah, all the functions that accepts the H class objects should work as well. Oh, I forgot the print extract feed summary is part. I'm not sure if you can see the documentation here. Yeah, it's supposed to give like this, like this, this mess, this, kind of a list but of course it's possible to extract them one by one by using the functions that I mentioned above but this is just to see everything together mm. I guess uh, yeah, 
I guess it's all I have to show for now. It's already past the hour and <laughs> it's like because you posted the link, I can have a look later as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess the one that maybe yeah, I mean yeah, all these references like these blocks here. Mm -hmm. these, I put it in the reference part. And the only one that doesn't work is the oh it's loading. Go back to block reference. Yeah, I put the blocks here. The only one that doesn't work is the emails one because he updated his slides to put the trough in front. So now it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> the link is broken. <laughs> so mm. Change that as well. But the rest, I put the links. Yep, and, the, awesome. and then also and all the functions. I try to put the links as well to their actual documentation so we can always refer to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And the package where they are, uh, yeah, I should be able to find the credit as well. I just, just control F and you can find this somehow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe this is like very interesting, but I guess I will need more time to see how it works, then how to make it stop like those off the heat then. <laughs> and to make it stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we passed the time, we didn't realize. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so next week I'll be presenting the last chapter for the book club. <laughs> Then two weeks and we'll be done. So I think we have to go now or else they will, we will take other speakers' time. So I'll uh, see you next week. <laughs> Thank you so you. much for the presentation. Bye. Bye.